we were with Designer's Workroom. So we're going to start making our valance that's going to go along with these draperies. Now, if, if you're just tuning in here, uh, you can watch the video on how we made these draperies. It has this nice little beginning, of course, going down them. And now we're going to be making a very simple valance that's going to go over these draperies. Um, and it's also going to have this trim going horizontally across, just like this, across our, our valance. And to begin with, our rod for these pinch plated draperies was 54 inches wide. And we are making the valance 58 inches wide. And that way it leaves two inches on each side of the um, cle for clearance. We are also, the draperies were made with a four inch return. That's what it's returning back to the wall. If you've watched my other videos um, regarding returns, that's the part that returns back to the wall. Now, we also have to make sure on our balance that the returns on our balance go farther past to clear. So in this case, we're making a six and a half inch return. And again, if you're not sure about what returns are, um, then go on to my YouTube channel and I have a ton of information um, about making draperies, uh, about what returns are, what, and, and etc. So to begin with, to calculate our width that, of, that we need of how much material, I've got this all down. So let me go over it real quick. Okay, the width of our balance is 58 inches. We're doing what's called a half kick pleat on, on each side of it, on the left side and on the right side. That's going to take eight inches to make this kick pleat. And then our returns, the left return is six and a half inches, the right return is six and a half inches. That's what we discussed because our drapery was a four inch return. This has to go past it by two and a half inches so it doesn't rub on the drape as it opens and closes. Then we need a sewing allowance of one inch. So my whole, my total width has to be 88 inches of, of material. Now in this case, I have enough material that I'm running my material so I don't have to put any seams on it. But if you were to put seams, because of course 88 inches, and if your fabric's only 54 inches wide, you have to seam it. Where are you gonna seam it? Well, let me go to page number two here. You're going to, to make up to 80 inch, 88 inches wide, you're gonna put the full width in the center, and then you're gonna add the remainder, it'd be 17 inches and 17 inches. Now what I would do is I'd be cutting a full width, I'd be cutting two cuts, two widths of material. And then with the second width, I would be cutting that in half. So I'd be joining a half width here and a half width here. I would join my materials first, and that way you have your sewing allowances for these seams. And then I would be cutting off each side of it to 17 inches and 17 inches. Um, and, and that's still leaving you your allowance, your half inch sewing allowance for the sides when you sew your lining on. Now that's going to go to the next thing. How long do we need to cut it? Well, our, I don't know if you can see this or not, our finished length is 15 inches. So we are going to be cutting the material 18 and a half inches because we're going to be pillowcasing it, but as we pillowcase it, the fabric is going to go around the back of it by about two and a half inches. So we are going to be cutting 50, I'm sorry, we're going to be cutting 15 inches plus the three and a half inches makes it 18 and a half inches. And that's going to give us all our sewing allowances that we need. That is going to be on the material. On the lining, we're going to be cutting that one half inch, I'm sorry, one inch under the finished length of the material. So we're going to be cutting the lining at 14 inches. Our drapery, our, our balance, I should say, is 15 inches. We're cutting our lining one inch under that measurement, which is going to be 14 inches. So to recap our, our balance, we're going to be cutting 15 inches plus a three and a half inches over. That's 18 and a half inches. And at this point, I'm going to be cutting an 88 inch wide piece. Uh, and then I'm going to be cutting 18 and a half inches off of it. That's going to give me my face material. And then my lining, I'm going to be doing the same thing. So I don't have any seams. 
I could make it with seams, but since I have enough material, I'm not going to. My lining, again, is 15 inches for the finished length. Uh, I'm going to be cutting that 14 inches. Lining's cut at 14 and a half. I'm, I'm sorry, lining's cut at 14 inches. The uh, face of the material is cutting at 18 and a half inches. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to make those cuts with that. And then, then from there, we're going to uh, start sewing it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make my first cut at 88 inches wide. And I have tape measures on each side of this. Oh, and before I forget, I apologize for the lighting in here. I know it's very low. We're on generator backup. We haven't had power since like 3 o'clock yesterday. So, but work still has to go, <laughs> go on. So I'm going to draw my line at 88 inches. I'm sure I can see it since it's a little dark. And we're going to go ahead and cut this. Just can't quite stretch all that way. Got to go around the table. Okay, that's for my length. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it in half couple different ways you can do this, but I'm going to fold my material in half. And then I'm going to turn it. Drop it off my material, the, the material a little bit off of my table. And the reason for that is because I don't want the selvage to be uh, in my way when I'm sewing. And although you probably can't see this, I'm going to be trimming off just a little bit of this selvage. I'm using the table as my guide. I'm just running my scissors. I apologize for being in front of the camera. Now I'm going to cut my length. My length, as I previously explained, is 15 inches. I'm going three and a half inches over for my sewing allowance. It's 18 and a half. There's also a self welt that's going at the top of this, um, which I'm going to cut another three inches. And that's going to give me my welting. Just while I'm here, I might as well just cut that too. Which is more than I need, but while I'm here, I might as well just cut both. So that's the extra. This piece I'm setting aside for the welting that's going on the top, the cording. This is just extra material. This is also extra material. balance material to the side 
So I can cut my lane. Now again, I have the luxury because we buy our lining by like hundreds of yards of lining. So I have the luxury of railroading, it's called railroading, making one continuous piece um, without having to seam my lining. Um, and, and the only reason I'm doing this, to be honest with you, is because I have other balances I'm going to be making so I can use the balance of what's left on this one for um, my other balances. Otherwise, I would be only cutting exactly what I need and sewing it. But again, I don't have to do that on, in this case. All right, so. We are 15 inch finish length. So we are cutting our lining one inch under, which is 14 inches um, by 80. I don't know what I'm doing here. Okay, here we go. 14 inches by again, 88 inches is what we need. I'm first drawing my line at 88 inches. Same width as the face fabric. This I may be able to reach all the way over. It is a stretch. And I'm doing the same thing, folding the material in half. Trimming the salvage off the one end. Reclamping the material so it doesn't go anywhere. Cutting my lining one inch under my finish length of my balance. My balance is 15 inches. My lining is getting cut at 14 inches. Saving this for my next few balances. Now we're going to take our face material. My face of my material is a little shinier than the, the back side of it. That's going to be facing up. And we're going to pin the lining to the very bottom. And this is the face of my lining. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to sew this along the bottom.
Let's take some pins in. You may notice I stick my pins in a little differently than you may do it. This is just how I prefer doing my pins. And then we're going to take this over to the sewing machine. And we're going to stitch this down. So our machines are not equipped with the quarter inch, the half inch, the three quarter inch marks that you would expect you usually would have. Um, these machines are older and they are commercial machines. So what we do is we set a magnet right here and we put our um, ruler and mark off our half inch sewing allowance, which is what we would be sewing with. Today is a half inch sewing allowance and we are sewing the bottom of this. So we're gonna go ahead we're going to sew this right down just to see. Sewing on the lining side of it. Okay, so I'm just finishing up pressing in, pressing this lining to the fabric. And I'll show you what I did. The way I do mine is I do not open up the seam and press it flat. I like it, I like it pressed to one side. And the reason why this is is because when you take your seam and you press it open and uh, sometimes you see that the direct sunlight coming in and sometimes you see this big wide heavy band of, of um, your seam so I like to only do uh, one side of it and so the next step here normally if this is uh, just a regular balance this is being board mounted by the way um, normally I would be bringing this up like this right up to my lining, my lining right up to my face of my fabric like so and I'd be pinning it in and sewing it but I'm adding this banding to the um, to the valance so instead of doing that I am flipping it over onto the back side and I am going to press it the way it'll actually sit on the board once it's all done. So this is what I'm doing. I'm bringing it up like this. And you can pin it in if you like. And I'm going to be pressing my hem in. And that's going to be my guide for my trim. I want to make sure I have it nice and even at the top. Pretty good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my iron. Oh, since about 2 o'clock yesterday, we lost our power. We had a huge snow and ice storm, and there's trees down all over the place. So I have very limited light um, and power. And not all these lights will work on the generator that we have. In hindsight, I wish we put in a bigger generator. Okay, so that's that. Now we're going to open this up to the face side. And now that gives me a nice line that I can pin my banding into.
Now for now, I'm just going to leave it a little long on each side. And I can trim that off later. Because I do expect it to feed in a little bit, even though I'm not going through all of the fabric, but I do expect it to feed in some. Now we're going to go ahead right against the hemline, right where the, we, we have that pressed, is exactly where I'm pinning this in. Okay, so I'm at my sewing machine, and my first line is going to be right where I press that, uh, that hemline. Right where I'm pressing it, and I can see it, I'm sure you can't, but I can see it very clearly. And, and I'm just sewing about maybe a sixteenth inch or so onto it, and I'm just going to run my stitch all the way down. Then once I have that stitch down, I'm going to hit the top of it about an eighth of an inch here. And all the while, I am going to be trying to keep this as flat as I possibly can, so I don't c cause um, any um, feeding in or uh, or try not to feed it in to the fabric. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and we go on to the next step. Okay, so I've got my banding sewn on. It looks pretty good. Couple of tricks. Number one, with your sewing machine. Um, you have different settings on there on, on just the length of your stitch and you want to make sure that the length of your stitch is as long as you can get it um, for this type of thing because the least amount of time that needle has to go through the least it's going to feed in and have all this ripply uh, look to it and then secondly after you sew it on take the iron which I already did and, and press it and that helps with any of your uh, wrinkles and what have you in there. So I've already pressed it. Um, as you can tell it came out very nice um, and now that my next step is to uh, take this and of course this is my lining that's been attached because now I have to sew my sides. So I'm flipping this over onto the lining like this And I'm going to pin this in, and the only thing I am sewing is here a half inch, and then down here a half inch. And that's going to finish off my sides. Then we're going to come back over because um, this is going on a board, as I had stated before, it's going on a board. Now if this wasn't, if, say if this is a rod pocket, then what I'd be doing is sewing down um, in, you know, to about here, then sewing across the top, and sewing down, I'll leave myself um, enough room to turn it through, press the top, and then put my um, um, heading and pocket in. But this is not, this is a tailored, very tailored look of a balance, so it's going on a board and this is what's going to finish off the sides of it. So I'm going to pin this and I'm going to sew this down a half inch on each side and then we're going to bring it back to the table and I'm going to turn it and we're going to press it in and then we're going to go and then we're going to pleat it and go from there. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, and again I apologize for the lighting. We're still without power and it's getting a little darker out and I'm losing all kinds of light. Anyhow, so I went ahead and I sewed down each uh, side of it. I just removed the pins. The next step is to take this and flip it around to the correct side. And that's what finishes off the banding well, and the sides. So now we're going to bring this back around. Where we're supposed to be.
front so you can see what the front looks like. Now our next step is to pin this in across the top. I'm going to stick several pins in here and then I'm just going to stitch this a quarter inch down just to hold it in place so we can put our pleats in. So let's get to that part of it and then we'll go from there. Alright, so we're going to go back to my original paper on how I figured this out. Now we're at the point where we're going to put the pleats in. Our balance width is 58 inches. We're putting a half kick pleat on each side. That's eight inches on each. We're putting a six and a half inch return on each side. And we had a one inch sewing allowance. So we've already got our sewing allowance in. Now what I recommend you do now is measure the total width of it and see if it's changed. Sometimes it does when it feeds in and what have you, but that's okay. Uh, in this case, it did feed in a little bit, but that's all right because we allowed eight inches for a kick pleat. So we don't have to have eight inches. If it came out seven and a half inches, that's fine. Um, so that's where you're going to steal from. You can't steal from your return. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a pin and we're going to put our first return, which is six and a half inches in. And then we had eight inches for the kick pleat, I measured mine, I did, I, it, because of the banding and everything, it did feed in, so I'm adjusting it to a seven and a half inch kick pleat, not a big deal. Now we need 58 inches, which is the face of our balance is 58 inches. And then from there, we know we absolutely have to have a six and a half inch return. Then we'll see what the remainder is. Which is about seven and a half inches. So it's equal on both sides. Now what we're going to do is, let me start down on this side. Maybe you can see it better. Okay. Where my pin is, I'm going to bring it over to the pin where the return is. So let's just take this and bring it over. I'm going to remove the pin and I'm going to put it right in place here. And I'm going to put another pleat, I'm, I'm sorry, another pin at the end of the pleat. And we're going to measure this six and a half inches down here. And for now, we're just going to put a little pin down here to hold it. Not that we're going to sew anything down here. Okay, that's that. Then we're going to go to the other side. And we have our 58 inches right here. So I'm really sorry about the lighting. But I have to get this done, so. I can't wait another day to do this. And I don't even know how long our power is going to be out. Okay. So we're going to bring this one over to this pin mark right here where I've got my pin. And again, we're going to go ahead and pin it. I'm going to measure my return. So make sure the rest of it goes underneath here.
Okay. Now the next step is to measure the width, making sure you got the face width of the balance, which is right on 58 inches. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take from the sewing machine, I'm going to sew this down, sew this side down so it doesn't move. Then I'll show you what the back side of it looks like. Okay, that's what the back side looks like. Then after I do that, I'm going to give this a press here, and I'm going to take this like that, and I'm going to press this return down right here. That's going to give us an e a nice, even, um, nice crisp look to it when we mount it on the board. So pretty much so what you're going to be looking at would be this part of it and this is the, the return that returns back to the wall. So I'm going to go ahead and do that Then we're going to press it and then we're going to put it on the board. Oh, we'll also have to show you the welting, how to put down, how to make welting too. Okay, be right back. Okay, so I have my welting foot on. I have several different types of feet, welting feet, um, and they're engraved on the side of them. And basically what you have is a hole right here that your needle goes through. And if you've never used one before, it does make it the process much easier. If you've never done welting before and you have a welting foot, it does make it easier. Some people just use a zipper foot, which does work. Um, this just happens to be just a little easier because it's um, concaved. You can see where it where it's made for the roping to go channel right through. So it does it does make it much easier. Uh, what I have on here this is um, half inch cording, and basically you just wrap your fabric around it. Now I'm not worried about my thread collar at this point because this is going on top of a board. It's not being inserted in a pillow or a cushion where I have to match my my collar thread. You'll never see the thread. So basically you just fold it in half like that and you put it down. You leave a little extra on each end of it. You want to sit back a little bit like I kind of am. Fold it. I just want to kind of guide it. Put your fingers right here and just kind of guide it as it goes through. And pretty much so it'll do its do its thing. Okay, we're ready to board mount this uh, balance. I got my balance all cut. Um, I took the leftover, the remaining fabric that we had cut for the balance, and I'm ready to wrap my board. So we're going to do this very quickly. Uh, I usually come up a good inch up on the edge here, approximately an inch. Again, I apologize for the low light. Still no power. Okay, then we're going to wrap the edge of the board. I'm just going to go like that and I'm going to bring it over. Something like that. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. get rid of some of this extra because what we're going to do is now we're going to mount it and we're going to give this a clean clean finish with the rest of this material but first I'm just going to get rid of some of this excess we don't need just to get it out of the way 
Okay, now we're going to mount our balance. Now, if you recall, we had a quarter inch stitch at the top of this. I'm going to use that as my guideline, but I'm actually stapling it just a little above that. So I'm, I'm approximately stapling about a half inch onto this board. And remove some of these pins that I put in previously. I begin with stapling down the one end. I'm going to go to the opposite end and staple this end down. The edge of the board meets the edge of the balance right where the, I call it, it's a it's a kick pleat basically, or a half kick pleat. A full kick pleat would go around this return too. So this is what we call a half kick pleat. So with that being done, now we're just going to do about a half inch. You could use a ruler if you want. reposition everything and I'll show you how we put this corner on here this is the return of course and we're just gonna grab the gun here and basically we're gonna put like a little 45 right here Okay, and that's how that's going to look. And then across the top, of course, we're putting the welting. It'd be really nice if we had light in here. Okay, so this is going to go across here, and so. So we're going to go ahead and staple this. And turn the corner. I'm leaving this longer here because we have to cut it and wrap it, which I'll show you in a second. Nothing like doing things in the dark. That's that. I'm going to finish this corner off. Okay, with the welting around the corner, now I just have to peel back and remove some of this welting out of here, but I'm leaving the material. Then with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it around as I put this, Let's see if I can show you, it's pretty easy to do. I have to step in front for a second. We 
what you want is a clean edge like that hopefully you can see that then I am going to staple it down now with that part done I'm going to bend in the rest and I'm going to staple it for a clean finish just like that. Got all kinds of threads here. Then we'll hang it up a little higher so we can see what this thing looks like. That's how we give it a clean finish. I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and we'll take a look at it. So here we are all installed. I think it looks pretty good. We've got the matching draperies. Uh, the draperies do open and close very nicely. So we can go ahead and close them up. And sometimes you got to play with them right here. Anyhow, they look very good. And open them back up again. And you notice we have the stacking that we want we're all the way back on each side of it and that's where you want your draperies also makes the, the room look bigger and just makes your window look better bigger so thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this thank you now I hope you enjoyed the content of my videos and I'm hoping that you're going to like and subscribe to my channel it would be muchly appreciated also I put a lot of time and effort into putting this together and I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't mind donating a small portion of money to keep this channel going. It's, of course, not necessary, but it's always appreciative. And also with that, if you have any questions regarding um, maybe some drapery stack back or, or um, swags, whatever your question is, I would be happy to help you out with that. And uh, to do that, all you need to do is just search for Scott Weaver or Scott Weaver videos and you can click on it and there's the subscribe button of course um, and then you click onto my face here and over here you'll see a donate to PayPal you hit that and it'll bring you to the link and it is safe and secure there it is right there you can donate with either a credit card uh, any credit card or debit card or by PayPal um, of course, this is not necessary, and I'm going to keep giving you the uh, best uh, videos that I possibly can with the limited resources I have. <laughs> but anyhow, thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you next time.